What is up everyone? My name is Ulysses and let's get into another Q&A video. We do have about half as many questions last time, so this should not be nearly as long as, what was it, like 50 minutes last time. I'm going to adjust this slightly and do have my handy dandy water though to make sure I stay hydrated and don't uh, sound too bad as we go through this. And I did look over these briefly and I realized I forgot to put down a question because I normally get these questions from Instagram. <clears throat> and uh you know twitter and whatnot and there was one question i was like wait i feel like there's one that's missing that was from omash um he did i don't remember the exact question because i know like i said i normally screenshot these i normally say these somewhere i just can't find exactly what the question was but it was something along the lines of what do i enjoy most about i think it was pokemon collecting and or pokemon uh, i guess content creation so i'll go ahead and answer that one first um as far as collecting gosh i just uh, there's so much that I just enjoy about collecting um, from just being around the artwork, learning about the history of cards. Um, gosh, just it, it fascinates me because even though, yeah, this, this is a shiny cardboard, it has history attached to it. You know, whether it's, you know, our childhoods or, you know, when you're thinking about different like the illustration contests and all these all these different things that happen and you just think about you know this, this is actually a part of history again it, it might seem kind of funny if, to think that pokemon is a part of history but it really is especially when you consider that it is the largest media franchise ever and so there's different just like historical I, I just love history like that actually was going to become a history professor back in the day and so i love learning about history anything that involves you know history art i just i just love so much actually as a side note something i actually do want to open up uh, on the channel it's this set it's like a tcg that's supposed to help kids learn history i think it's called historica if i'm not historica i think this is what it's called but i keep on meaning to buy a booster box just because the cards look so cool and yeah i, I love history but yeah, as far as the collecting side as as well as and this goes actually um into the pokemon content creation as well the other thing I, I enjoy is just being able to, uh, I guess, connect with other people who have similar interests. And not, e not even just that, but also how Pokemon can, uh, it can be a segue into getting to know someone. And not just getting to know them on a, you know, Pokemon, oh, what's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, do you want to play, you know, the TCG and things like that? Because that, that's all cool, don't get me wrong. But being able to have that be almost a gateway to get to know someone on a more personal level like actually and i i normally don't say who who asks these questions but i know this one was from omash like for example you omash like just being able to get to know you and other people like all through pokemon like that is just it's just so awesome to me and then finding out for example like omash and i we only, we only live like 30 30 ish minutes away from each other like that's just so cool to me that through this hobby through collecting through pokemon content creation that you can connect with so many different people and it can lead to friendships it can lead to um it's led to business being able to sell to different people it's led to just yeah just meeting so many different people across the world like in australia sweet potato shout out to you like just so many different people canada uh new i'm trying to think where else have i do i know people from like because of this hobby uh, you know i've sold to people in mexico to india like all over the world it's just it's just so amazing how just this hobby and content allows you to connect with so many different people in so many different areas of the world and it's just it's just awesome i love that and then also as far as creating content it's just fun for me um i don't love being in front of a camera but again i i like sharing this with others and then being able to connect with other people through it and then also lately i've been trying to do a whole lot more adding my perspective both uh, in life but also in the collecting side because i think it helps other people you know to, to save money to make sure they're they're more educated on the hobby and just things like that okay moving on um i haven't been able to get a celebrations pre-order in do you think this set will be hard to find after release <clears throat> um so as far as like as like release day so by the time i get this video up it's probably going to be Monday. So 
celebrations will be out in a few days. Heck, they might even start putting celebrations on the shelf like today or tomorrow or in a couple days. So as far as this week, this week, next week, three weeks from now, yes, I think celebrations is going to be hard to find if you don't have any pre-orders in. You can try, you know, hitting up your Walmarts, your local game stores, uh, Targets, etc. Um, but if you can't find it, I think that's okay. Like that's totally fine. Something to keep in mind with celebrations is that it's a small set. Like, sorry, I'm a little burpy tonight. But it, it is a small set and a highly desired set. So what that means, going starting with the last one, with it being highly desired, that means it's going to be bought out a lot. Like a lot of people are going to want that set for themselves to open, seal, you know, seal collection to flip, whatever. It's going to be um, highly sought after. And so because of that, there's a good chance Pokemon's going to print a lot of it. If they already don't have enough printed right now, they're going to do a probably a reprint. It's just it's just a pattern. Like I'm not trying to predict the future. It's just simply look at anything. Look at any of the sets that have been popular in Pokemon. Look at Champions Path. Uh, you know, Vivid Voltage. Just just the last 12 months, Vivid Voltage. Um, what else has been popular? Uh, Shining Shining Fates. Every time there's a popular set. Pokemon reprints it. Why? Because they are a profit-making company. They're they're trying to make money. Like then that's fine. And so if you're a profit-making company or a for-profit company, then when you and you have a product that people keep buying, of course you're going to keep printing it or you're going to keep making it because it keeps selling. So long as it keeps selling, Pokemon's going to keep printing it. Now they're not going to print it for six years. I mean, obviously people will get tired of it in six years. If they just printed it for six years straight, that's what happened with evolutions. But, you know, will they keep printing it for six months, eight months? Will there be three waves of reprints? Maybe. I mean, again, but going back to the first um, point, this is a small set. 50 cards in the set. 50 cards. Think about that. Um, Evolving Skies has like 200, I don't even know, 270 cards. And this one has 50. Put that in context. So let's say everyone gets their pre-orders, everyone buys all the product, you know, over the next three, four weeks, you know, there's no product available. People are opening stuff up. People are ripping, you know, people are doing their, you know, rip and ship and all those things. People are flipping them, scalping them, whatever. What's going to happen in four weeks? Well, four or five weeks, six weeks down the road, Pokemon has more product coming in of celebrations. And what's happened? A good majority of the hobby has completed their set, a master set of the car, of the of celebrations. Or at the very least, they have a lot of the cards that they that they already wanted or are close to complete their master sets. And so it's just it's not going to be that hard to come by in six, seven, eight weeks. Now I know you know there's been some people talking about supply chain issues and that might be the case. You know, maybe this isn't eight weeks down the road. This might be you know three months down the road that, you know, supply for celebrations is a lot more available. But, you know, if you know me, I talk about patience. I mean, what is three months? Seriously, what is three months in the grand scheme of collecting? Like, if you're planning on collecting, you know, for 10, 15, 30, the rest of your life, <laughs> then what is three months? Like, it, I, I, I understand, like, the psychology of it but I don't understand the FOMO. Like, and I understand the psychology of it, but and whatnot, but I just, I, I cannot get myself to have FOMO around celebrations. I just can't because I understand too well the pattern of Pokemon. I understand they're trying to make money. I understand a small set. And so I hope that I'm conveying enough to you that this is not going to be a hard set to find in eight weeks, <laughs> you know, in 12 weeks. And even if, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, Pokemon does not print as much as I am hoping they print, 50 cards. You can complete a master set pretty easily when it's only 50 cards. Or if you just want that Charizard, I think there are going to be plenty of Charizards to go around. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Don't you know pay these ridiculous prices I've been seeing for pre-orders, like three times retail. It's ridiculous. Like... If, yeah, I mean, what, those ETBs, 50 bucks? If, yeah, maybe 60, 65, you know, 
that's what it comes down to when you know six weeks you run by him like yeah sure but don't be paying freaking 150 bucks like 160 i've been seeing pre-orders i'm like no come on guys like that's more like yeah when this is out of print for two years you know that's that's the kind of price that that should be at not when this is a brand new has not even been released set 50 car yeah okay we have to move on <laughs> I, I want this to be a not not too long of a video um when you got back into the hobby what resources did you use to learn all about the new cards you had missed out on that's a really good question um so as far as so when I got back into it, I actually just did a lot of just independent research. When I when I really enjoy something, I just dive head first. I get just I learn so much. I look at everything I possibly can. Um so I, I just, yeah. I mean, I remember like literally my daughter was was recently born, uh my youngest. And well, I mean, I'd already been in Pokémon for a little bit, but I guess just as an example, you know, at 3 in, 3 in the morning, when my daughter woke up because she needed to be fed and I went and got her, what was I doing? I was on my phone looking up Pokemon cards. I was looking up sets. I was trying to get more educated. And that's still something that I, I mean, my daughter isn't waking up at three in the morning, but that's still something that I do. Like literally, probably on a daily basis, if not, then almost daily, I'm looking up cards. I am look, uh, getting more educated on, you know, promos I didn't know existed. Because that, that's another thing that um, I want to point out is it doesn't matter if you've been in the hobby for you know, two years, three years, 10 years, you know, there's always something new to learn about in this hobby. Partially because Pokemon keeps coming out with new things and that's great. But also, you know, we have 25 years of Pokemon cards being uh, being created. My gosh, there's just so many from Japanese exclusives, you know, to Pokemon Center exclusives, like all these different things, set cards, um, trophy cards, oh, just so many different things you can learn about, you know. Uh, but as far okay, okay, I guess your question was more resources. So as far as resources, I would recommend um, Bulbapedia is a good one. Uh, Pokelector, Pokelector.com. That's with a K. So kind of like Pokelector, like collector, Pokelector. Um, that has all the sets ever created in the the regular sets, the main sets. Um, and it has pictures of every card, so that's really helpful to, for you to be able to look at, okay, what's a set that I missed? And just being able to look at, oh my gosh, look, these are all the cards. Oh my gosh, look at this Machamp. Look at this Charizard. Who the heck is this Pokemon? And just starting to just become familiar uh, with what uh, sets and cards you missed. Um, depending on what aspect of the hobby you're into, like if you just want to collect, if you want to you know, sell cards, um, eBay, just looking at eBay, you know, completed listings. Uh, you know, PokeTubers are pretty good resources depending on who it is. I would be uh, cautious about anyone, about PokeTubers who give out strictly investor, you know, advice. There are a few good ones. Don't get me wrong. There are some good ones. Um, but the only issue with some of them that I've noticed is that some of them have not been in the hobby for that long, and yet they try to make themselves out as as like a big expert. And so be be cautious. Um, some people who I would definitely recommend who do give out some some investor you know some investor and collector you know information uh, are um, Twice Baked Jake. I think that's his name. He's he's pretty good. He, he's solid. I, I've disagreed with some of his stuff before, but he, he's solid. He's he's not, uh, he doesn't, I guess, avoid people who get too hyped up over an upcoming set or even like certain promo cards. Like if they're getting too hyped, I, not that, not that you shouldn't get excited or be excited about the upcoming things. I just kind of am cautious about when people are hyping up new things just because I kind of wonder if they're, I guess if they're trying to, if they have a stake in it, for example, like if someone's saying, yeah, if, all, if someone is, for example, let's go back to celebrations. If someone is coming in and saying, yeah, celebrations is going to have, you know, one print run, like invest in it for sure. That person either is one, not educated on Pokemon or two, they might have a lot of celebrations pre-ordered or coming in and they want to be able to sell 
their celebration stuff for twice as much, you know, twice what they bought it for or three times what they bought it for. So people who are giving, I, I guess good information, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this, not overly hyped information, just more, I, I get, okay, maybe a better way to put it. People who have been in the hobby for a few years at least are better people to listen to and make sure they're not overly hyping things. If, if you find them overly hyping things, I would take their information with a grain of salt because, again, I, I worry that they're trying to just sell. They're trying to hype up something that, that they want to sell. Um, uh, no, oh, gosh, uh, for anyone, whether you want to collect, invest, have a, you know, Pokemon shop, you know, you want to sell on eBay or you want to open up your own shop one day, you know, a, a local game shop and whatnot, SM Pratt. SM Pratt is one of the OGs, been in the hobby so long, like even when Pokemon was, you know, kind of dead, you know, no one was collecting or hardly anyone was collecting, hardly anyone was, you know, buying cards and whatnot. He's been, he's seen it just, he's seen it all. And so his information, his experience, he's not, he doesn't hype anything up. He's so down to earth, like such a chill guy. Um, just through Discord, I've chatted with him a little bit and just, yeah, just such a cool guy. Um, so SM Pratt, check out his YouTube channel. Just very top notch information. Um, and then uh, I guess the last resource would just be the po you know, Pokemon community in general. Uh, you know, just, when you're involved, for example, I know it, you know, we have COVID, all this stuff, so we might not be able to have, you know, go to tournaments and have as many gatherings depending on where you live. But when that does happen, you know, being more involved in the Pokemon community locally, but also being involved in the Pokemon community digitally. So whether that's through Instagram, through TikTok, uh, other, U uh, you know, YouTube communities and whatnot, Twitter just be involved so that you know what people are talking about and also someone might mention a card you never heard about like that's what's ha what's happened a lot you know scrolling through instagram and i see well what is this card i didn't know this card existed and then be able to look it up and be like oh my gosh like this is from this set or this was this promo and then it's just learning more about it and uh, yeah just being involved like that that is such a good way to find out what other cards are available because again sometimes someone will just mention a card and it's like whoa what is that and you just learn about it and yeah just again know that this is a continual process i've been in the hobby for a little while now that not not a not like 10 years or anything just been a been a couple of years been a few years i don't even remember it's been a it's been a fun ride I don't remember when i got back in 2019 so it's been a couple of years um but yeah i'm still learning every day even uh Scott S.M. Pratt, he talks about he's been in it for a while and there are cards that sometimes he discovers like he didn't realize existed because there so, there's so much. There's so much to learn, so much that you can enjoy. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, favorite ice cream flavor? My favorite ice cream flavor would be mint chocolate chip. Um, except if I'm eating some brownies, then I might just want just straight up vanilla. Although mint chocolate chip is pretty good with it too. But mint chocolate chip is usually my, is usually my go to for ice cream. Um, how, how, oh, how much do you spend on Pokemon each month? That's kind of a personal question. Uh, I guess I can't give you any real figures because it's kind of relative. How much I spend on Pokemon is dependent on how much I sell that month or the previous month. Um, so that means that some months I've literally spent like 50, 60 bucks. Other months I've spent a few thousand. It just depends on, you know, how much I'm, yeah, how much I've uh, sold recently. And, you know, also just sometimes I just don't feel like, not that I don't feel like buying anything, but sometimes I just am more strategic uh, with the money that I have because I'm waiting for a better deal or I'm waiting for just certain things. And, you know, there, there are certain cards that I look, that I'm looking to buy but don't don't pop up very often um and so yeah it's just all about being strategic and it, it depends on how much i sell
literally sometimes I not because I try to stick to that budget. I try not to overspend. I try not to, you know, I don't want to put myself in a bad place financially over cards. Even if it's something I'm like, yo, I think this could, you know, be worth something in 10 years or five years or whatever. I I trying to put myself in a in that that kind of spot financially that would hurt me right now because odds are even that is a good card to hold on to for five years. If I put myself in a bad place financially, that means that I'm probably going to sell that card in like two months. So yeah, um, <laughs> I I saw this. Um, I I pulled some Mew Oreos. Am I now a millionaire? <laughs> Yes, you are now an Oreo millionaire, I guess. <laughs> no, oh my gosh. This is I'm I'm this is probably just a joke, but my gosh, the whole Mew Oreo, you know, being worth a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, it's just a meme now. Like what I I don't even know what more, more to say. I said something on my Instagram stories a few days ago, but if please don't buy a Mew Oreo for a hundred bucks. Like literally, it's not worth that much. It's so funny seeing people do these listings. It's like rare Mew Oreo. And then there are 7,000 other listings. <laughs> and there are more Mew, are there more Pokemon Oreos in stores? And yes, that Mew is not rare. And it's a cookie. I mean, if you want to buy a Mew Oreo, go ahead. But I guarantee you can find one for like five bucks. Or you can go to the store and spend 20 bucks on, you know, like, six packs of oreos and you'll probably find one so yeah um advice for sticking to your own creativity slash entrepreneur office hours when you're tired okay so i'm assuming you mean okay so so yeah so if you've said okay so just kind of understand the question is so if you've set your own office hours for like uh being an entrepreneur or being creative so kind of more like a side gig is something that's not your main job. How do you stick to those hours? So that time you set aside when you're tired. That's a good question. Cause I think we all go through that from time to time. Um, well, what comes to mind is I would first, and this is going to take some self-awareness, but I would first try to understand why I'm tired in the first place. And hold on, you adjust this slightly. There we go. Just my back. I'm kind of tall. <laughs> so sometimes I go out of the camera when I, um, when I move up, but so, so figure out, I would ask myself, why am I tired in the first place? So am I tired because I'm not taking care of myself, you know, physically, you know, am I, am I exercising? Am I getting enough sleep? Am I eating on time? Am I eating well? Um, you know, my man managing stress, uh, these things, if you're not taking care of them, then yeah, you're going to be tired, you know, because presumably when you have some kind of side gig, side hustle, something that you might want to turn into uh, something full time, or if it's just like a passion project, those are usually done, you know, outside of uh, the day. It's usually in the evening, uh, maybe on the weekend. And so, you know, you have to ask yourself again, are you are you tired because you're not taking care of yourself? And if that's the case, if you're like, yeah, I don't really exercise or uh, I don't really get the best sleep or, and that's just the thing, going back to sleep and gosh, I could do like a whole video on this, but when it comes to sleep, it's not just, are you getting, you know, seven to eight hours of sleep? It's how is your quality of sleep? Are you waking up during the night? You know, do you have a hard time falling asleep? You know, do you wake up with energy or are you waking up, you know, groggy? You know, all these things to consider as far as your physical health is concerned. Because if it's, you know, if it's that stuff, then start taking care of your physical health better and you'll find you have more energy and you won't be as tired. Um, the other side of the coin is going, it's kind of going into more your mental health. And that is, you know, there are times when we are going to start something new. Like let's say you want to start, uh, start a YouTube channel or maybe you want to, uh, you know, sing or you, you enjoy singing and you want to put that out there on you know, YouTube or TikTok or you want to start a business or a blog or whatever. You know, there's something you want to start or maybe you have started already, but you're just anytime you go to work on it, you start feeling like, oh, like, I don't know if I want to do this. 
that kind of like tiredness, if you know what I mean, that's more a mental health um, thing where it's okay. You got, we got to start talking about your perspective because what happens when, you know, okay, you are taking care of your health, your physical health, but you go to work on that YouTube video and you're like, mm, I don't know. I'm kind of tired right now. I don't really want to work on that. Odds are that's more of a perspective thing of like, you have some insecurities, some insecurities that, <clears throat> excuse me, about yourself and or about what you're about to attempt. So again, if it's a business, you might start, there might be some beliefs in the back of your mind, some insecurities saying this might not work out. And the same goes with, you know, if you're going to start a YouTube channel, you might think I, you know, no one's going to watch this or someone might think this is stupid. Someone make, might make fun of me. I don't know about this. Um, or, you know, all these, basically all these negative thoughts, they start popping up just in the back of your mind. You might not even like say them out loud, but so long as they're in your mind, so long as you have insecurities, even if they're, they're not things, again, that just pop into your mind, but you just have certain insecurities about yourself, about what you're able to accomplish, or you're putting too much expectations on you. Like, like I, I think some people psych themselves out of doing something because they're like, okay, I'm going to start this YouTube channel and then I'm going to, you know, have a million followers and, you know, I'm going to make all this money and go have, have brand deals. And it's like, what? Like that, that's fine to have that goal, but to have that kind of, to put that kind of expectation and weight on your shoulders, like it, it puts unneeded stress on your mind. That's going to create, you know, stress hormones, produce more stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. That's going to affect both your physical and mental health. Because really what's happening when you are having all these negative thoughts and these insecurities, what's happening is that you're having um, an excess amount of these stress hormones such as cortisol. When you have an excess amount of these, uh, these hormones, a big sign of that or oftentimes what happens is that you have less energy. And so you also have less motivation. And so again, that's why I say you have to identify why are you tired? Are you Because again, going back to the physical part, you're taking care of your physical health, great, but you're taking care of your mental health. And that includes how are you seeing yourself? How are you seeing the world? How are you seeing this opportunity to you know, create, to have a business? Because if you are having a hard time starting then odds are, you know, again, you're just not having a good perspective around what you're trying to start and or yourself. And so work on that and you should have more energy as you start going. And again, even as you work on that, don't wait until you feel good enough. In my opinion, in my opinion, just start. Like stop putting off that business, stop putting off, you know, that YouTube channel, stop putting off that whatever Oftentimes when you just start going, then you have enough momentum to just keep going. And if you find yourself keep on getting tired and again, work on that physical health, work on that mental health, work on, you know, building up your self-esteem so that you don't worry about those things, about whether or not someone's going to like your channel or whether or not it's going to work out. Because at the end of the day, those things don't matter. Like, yes, obviously you want your dream to happen. Yes, you want that business to work out, especially if that's something you want to use to feed your family. But what's going to matter is whether or not you even tried. Because I think what's worse than failing or, you know, if your business doesn't work out is having the next 60 years thinking, oh, what if I had done that? What if I had done that? And then it's always in the back of your mind, like, oh, I should have tried that. So I, I say at least give it a shot. Okay, um, hopefully hopefully that helps answer your question. Uh, okay, last two questions. What's the biggest mistake you are you are people? What's I think? Okay, what's the biggest mistake? I think it's supposed to say what's the biggest mistake you see people making when trying to sell cards for the first time. That's actually a very easy question to answer, then that is being uneducated on what they have. Being uneducated on what they sell or are attempting to sell is what I see as the biggest mistake, the biggest 
just thing I see. And so often I see on eBay, especially over the last 12 months when Pokemon's gotten more popular and, you know, they've gone up in price on certain cards, it's people listing their cards and not even, it's not even right. You know, they're saying, you know, I have a PSA 10 base, you know, first edition base set to Mewtwo and you just look at the picture and it's not graded. It's not first edition. It's XY evolution <laughs> and it looks like it's played. So just things like that where it's someone you know heard down from the grapevine that oh my gosh this lugia card uh sold for you know twelve hundred dollars and they're like hey i have a lugia card and they throw it up on, on ebay without doing any kind of education and it doesn't sell they're like why is my lugia card selling for five hundred dollars well sir it's because your lugia card is actually from you know uh darkness of blaze it's not hollow that set just came out, you know, two years ago, or was it last year? Two years ago, last year? Sometime recently. <laughs> but yeah, just people being uneducated on what it is they're trying to sell. Because what will happen is that one, they either can't sell it because it's way overpriced for something that, again, it's way, it's way overpriced, it's not listed correctly, and or um, they undersell it and they just don't make as much money as they, as they should. I mean, there's, gosh, the amount of times I've seen a card, I'm like, no, that card is not worth 30 bucks. And I buy it and then sell it for, you know, 125 because that's what it's actually worth at the moment. Yeah, it's just being educated on what you're selling. That That is the biggest thing I see. And then also being, edu I guess, being educated on what you're selling. So the, the cards themselves, being educated on the collectibles market in general, because you have to understand the collectibles work a whole lot differently than stocks and real estate. And so, oh my gosh, it like the amount of people I've been seeing over the last few months, couple months, just talking about like, yeah, the Pokemon market is crashing and whatnot. I'm like, guys, you don't understand how collectibles work. I, yeah, I, just understand how collectibles work, how they are different from stocks, how they're different from real, real estate, and then understanding the Pokemon community. Be engaged. Going back to that first question, or one of the first questions about like um, resources for the hobby, be engaged. You know, I I don't think you can sell Pokemon cards long term without being engaged and enjoying it. I I think the people who who um, I guess fizz out of it, fizzle out, are just people who didn't enjoy it. They just, they were in it for the money. The amount of, oh my gosh, the amount of people who during 2020 <laughs> were hitting me up asking, you know, what card should I buy? Should I, what do you think about this card and whatnot? And then come back and people are asking me, uh, and then come back in 2021 and asking me, like, oh my gosh, this card, is, you know, do you want to buy this card or can I sell this card or should I sell this card now? I'm like, dude, no, like, <laughs> I, I just don't think they were engaged. They they don't enjoy Pokemon. It was just more of a, oh, this card keeps going up, up, up. I'm going to buy it because it's going to be worth, you know, I don't know, $10,000 or whatever they thought it was going to be. And it might be worth $10,000, but not for another 15 years. But in any case, yeah, hopefully that, that uh, helps answer that question. And last question is, do you consider yourself a collector or investor? A collector, 100% collector. I mean, I would say a, a collector who also has a part-time Pokemon or collectibles business. And gosh, I and I absolutely love that. Like. If you could have told me when I was seven or eight that, hey, when you grow up, you can have, you can not just collect Pokemon cards and play the games, but you can actually make money on the side or potentially as a living being involved in this and buying cards and selling cards and being around cards. Like, I don't even know if my eight year old mind could fathom that. That would be just like the ideal, like, oh my gosh, can I time travel now? Can I be there now? Because it is, it is just amazes me 
that something I enjoy so much can also bring in an income, which was such, oh my gosh, such a huge, huge blessing in 2020. Because I think I've mentioned this before. I don't remember how much I've talked about it on the channel. But in 2020, so our family business, the comp company that I work for, my, my dad's business, we almost had to shut our doors. Like we almost had to close down because, you know, it was 2020. My dad's, a lot of our business was coming from uh, seminars that we were doing. And literally we could not do our seminars because things were shut down. They were, there was like a limit of like six people who could attend a, you know, who could be in a room, you know, in a public place, all these different things. And so, you know, there were times where I wasn't getting paid on time. And so what happened? You know, I had my, you know, low collectibles business, you know, just sell on eBay. And, you know, even though there were cards that I didn't want to sell, I still sold them, you know, cards, you know, uh, that I was buying for like 30 bucks. I sold for like 200 and then other cards I sold for like 800. Like that's what kept us afloat during 2020 so that I could pay my rent. And oh my gosh, my daughter, my youngest daughter has, was just born. Like, can you imagine? Like, seriously, consider this. It's 2020. You might lose your job. You have a newborn. <laughs> Rent is due. You, you have two kids now. You're married. Like, guys, there were times when I was staying up until five in the morning selling cards, wiggling and dealing <laughs> because so that I could pay my rent. So I could put food on the table. So I didn't have to displace my family. I am super, super grateful that Pokemon cards have a monetary value to it. I understand, you know, there's been some frustration over the last 12 months, you know, people being upset that, oh my gosh, this card's worth that much. Oh my gosh. And, you know, people hyping stuff up and whatnot. And yeah, yeah, I don't want to see people falsely hype up anything. But I have zero, zero point zero 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 problem with P with Pokemon cards being worth money, being worth a single card being worth two hundred bucks. Because I know that if I need to, I can sell part of my collection, and my family's going to be okay. I'm like yes, we we work on we also have a savings account and whatnot, and you should have a savings account too. Don't put all your money in Pokemon cards. But the fact that something I enjoy so much also has monetary value attached to it, it's just icing on the cake. Like I would collect cards even if they weren't worth anything, just because I love the art. It you know brings me back to my childhood. You know those those feelings are nice. You know helps keep me young. I think it's something I can also enjoy with my daughter. You know so there are lots of good benefits you know to this hobby for me. But at the end of the day, I'm also just very happy that. Again, I can have a little business on the side that, you know, I would like to grow over the next, you know, 10, 15 years. But yeah, uh, collect. So I guess I kind of went into a little more detail with that question, but definitely a collector who enjoys having a, um, a uh, like a collectibles business on the side. And so that's all I got for today, everyone. Those are the questions. We will go ahead and do another Q&A question, uh, uh, Q&A video. Uh, next month, I enjoy doing these videos. Hope, hopefully this is um, both enjoyable and helpful to you guys. And uh, yeah, that is all I got. So have a wonderful, wonderful day, night, or whenever you're watching this. And I will catch you all later.